Hello there. Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for more of that. Today we're talking about making a vlog intro inside of Resolve. This is something that a lot of people have been asking me about and I'll show you my take on it. Huge thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video. More about them in a little bit. Here we are in Resolve 17 and I have a few different clips just laid out here for our intro and they have the fancy transitions going on. Pretty neat. Just a bunch of things, you know, from like a travel vlog, that kind of feeling. And just in case anyone's wondering, these are just the stock transitions that come with Resolve that you'll find in the effects library under video transitions, kind of down towards the bottom under fusion transitions, things like pan up and zoom in and slide right, those, those kind of things. So I just pick the transitions that work well for the motion of the clip. just to kind of keep that same motion. This is pretty typical of a vlog intro, I would say, but let's say we want to have some motion graphics over the middle. Easiest way to do this would be just to go to the titles in Resolve and find one that you like and just drag this over and you can select it, go up to the inspector. And there we have our little intro. It's kind of cool. So if you don't want to make your own graphics, that's a super great way to do it. We also have a bunch of these for sale at groundcontrol.film, all kinds of animated templates and things like that. Check those out in the description. But let's say we want to make our own graphics here. I'm just gonna delete this and let's make a new fusion composition because we're going to actually create this from scratch. Here in the media pool, I'll right click and say new fusion composition and we'll call this vlog intro graphics. Maybe we'll make this about six seconds long and hit create. Now in the media pool, this should show up here and I'll double click on it and that'll open up our comp inside of Fusion. If you're not familiar with Fusion, make sure to check out this basics video. That'll give you a little bit of a crash course on what the heck Fusion is because I will be moving somewhat fast to build these graphics and uh, knowing a little bit about Fusion is gonna be really helpful. So. We start with our media out node. This is just whatever we connect to this is gonna get rendered. So I'm gonna grab a background node, drag that into our flow here. And I'll take the output and connect it to our media out. That'll give us a black screen. And what I'll actually do is select this background node and go over to the inspector and turn this alpha down. So that's just going to give us a nice clear background to put our graphics on. I'm gonna start out with some text for our fake YouTube channel here, let's say uh, Jill Jackson photography, right? You know, Jack and Jill, I don't, I'm sure there's people named Jill Jackson, but it's not her, it's <clears throat> just made up. So let's go over to this T right here and grab our text plus and drag this over here and take the output and merge it over the output of our background one. Now I'll select the text and let's type in Jill Jackson. Yeah, and the font I'm gonna use is called Mont. M-O-N-T. This is just a free font you can download on dafont.com. All you have to do is just install it like a regular font and then make sure you restart Resolve. And then that should show up here. So there's our text, pretty simple. But now let's say we want a frame around our text to kind of like animate on. We can do that a bunch of different ways. Probably the easiest way is with a shape. So I'm gonna use our fancy shortcut, Shift Spacebar. Shift Spacebar will let you basically search for and add any kind of node inside of Fusion. So I'm gonna type S for shape and then RE for S rectangle and S render, which is actually both what we need. Yeah, look at that. So I'll select S rectangle and I'll also do S render. Gotta connect rectangle to render because anytime that you make a shape node, you have to have a shape render node. And I'll take this render node and merge it over our merge one, organize things a bit. And now up here we have a rectangle, yay! but we don't want just a big old square like this. First of all, we just want the outline. So I'm gonna go over here to my inspector and decheck solid right here and pump up the border width. See, there we go. And we can adjust the width and the height for this graphic to be real nice. Something like that, classy. So that's looking pretty cool. I'll grab our text and under layout, I'll take this center and just move this text up just a touch so that it's in the middle of our rectangle here. 
And now we've basically built what we want this to look like at the end. Now we just want this to animate on. So there's a bunch of different ways that we can animate this. Uh, I think what I wanna do is have this kind of start as a little line and then kind of go around and just grow into this rectangle. The cool thing about using a shape node is that it has that sort of thing built in here under position and length. So if we take length down, then it adjusts the length of what's actually drawn for this shape. And if we move the position around, then it moves the line around. You see where we're going with this? So we can start with the length at like zero and then animate it to grow over time. And we can also animate the position so that it looks all fancy schmance, yes. So we're gonna do this with keyframes. So we gotta figure out how long we want this to animate. I'd say maybe a, a second or so, cause it's supposed to be fancy. So I'm gonna go to like 30 seconds ish, somewhere in there. And I'm gonna keyframe our position and our length. All you have to do is click on this little diamond until it turns red. And right here at 30 frames, I do want this to be at zero and one. And at the beginning of our comp, let's say at zero, let's have this length be at zero, but this position, let's just have that at one. So now when we play this back, I'll just click off of here and hit spacebar, it moves things around. Now it looks like that position is kind of moving along with that length in a way that we don't actually want. So I think what I'll do is do the opposite here. For position, we're gonna start at zero and then at 30 frames end at one. So now we have the effect we're looking for. That's cool. So that's the basic animation of the shape. Now we need to animate the text. Again, there's a million ways you can do this. One way that I enjoy to do this is to just mask the text and have the text kind of drop down out of nothing. So here where our text is merged over, we can mask this merge. Just click on this rectangle mask with the merge selected and it'll add that. Now I'll select the rectangle and go up here and we'll adjust the width and the height to be within our rectangle here something like that, just around the words. And now all we have to do is animate this text to drop down. So we'll have that drop down and be done at 30 as well. So at 30 frames, we're gonna select the merge and actually animate this within the merge. The reason we do that is so that we can adjust the text size and position and everything independently and then keep the animation for our merge later if we want to. So let's select the merge and we're gonna animate this center property. So I'll click the keyframe diamond so it turns red and then move here a little bit later than our first keyframe for our shape, let's say 15 frames or so. We'll take this center and we'll just push it to the right and that will move our text up kind of out of that mask. So here's our animation so far. There we go, see that looks nice, looks in, looking classy, right? Looking classy, baby, there we go. So that's pretty cool, but we could make it just a little bit nicer. Here's how we do that. This animation looks cool, but it kind of stops really suddenly, which I don't know, some people mind, some people don't. I tend to think things look better when they slow down before they stop, right? When they ease to a stop, when you take it easy. Yeah, nice. So the way that you adjust animations like that and ease into things is with the spline panel. So I'll go up here and make sure my spline panel is bright white. Maybe I'll even close Inspector for now. And that'll open up our spline panel down here. And what this does is show you a graph of anything that you have animated, as long as you check its box over here. And I'll shift select position and length. Basically everything that is animated, I have selected down here in the spline panel. And we'll hit this little button, zoom to fit. And that'll actually bring up our graphs for the animation here. These are really cool because you can be really specific about how you want this motion to act in between the keyframes. And the easiest thing to do is just select the ending keyframes and hit F on the keyboard. What that'll do is flatten out this little handle here so that when this animation ends, it kind of eases to a stop, you know? You can think about like, if you're coming up to the top of a mountain, you don't just stop at this little sharp top you kind of just ease up there, you know? This is a good good for sledding. Anytime your graphs look good for sledding, that's when you know it's gonna be smooth. Smooth animation. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's what I'm tizna bizzin'. So now we basically have our graphics for our intro. Let's switch over to the edit page. And now we can just take our intro graphics and drag that into our composition here. And let's say we'll have those start and halfway through our edit. So now we have something that looks a little bit like this. Oh yes, it's looking sick. So this is great, if you like it, just roll with that. But let's take it even one step further. Oh my goodness, he's gonna go crazy. 
we're going to actually use this title as a mat for our footage and do a neat little color and black and white effect here. The idea is to have all of these shots show up in color right where this graphic is and then the rest of it be black and white. And you could do the opposite if you wanted to. First thing I'm going to do is select all of my footage here and I'm going to right click and say new compound clip and I'll hit create. And all that's going to do is basically just flatten this into one clip that we can put one effect on, that kind of thing. And I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this up above our fusion composition. So now we can't see the fusion composition at all because we have all of this footage completely over it. So how do we use this graphic as a mat? Well, in Resolve 17, they have a new feature where you can set any layer here in the timeline as a mat. So let's select fusion composition and go over to our inspector. And here under composite mode, I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom section here and select alpha. What that's going to do is tell Resolve that this is going to be our mat. This is going to be what controls the transparency of something else. And then in the clip above it, we're going to select this and go to the inspector. And under composite mode, we're going to scroll all the way down and select foreground. And now if we disable our first track, we can see that this is cutting out our video and using our graphics as a mat. So now we have really fancy video within our graphics. Isn't that awesome? So now all we have to do is make this layer of video look different than our cut out video so that we can actually see what is going on. Easy way to do that is just in the color page. I'll just select color right here and we can easily just select our bottom clip using this little mini timeline here. I think what I'll do is just take our gamma down a little bit and take our saturation all the way down. And now we can start to see the difference between the black and white and the color graphic. As we scrub through, we can see it, but man, it's just not that big of a difference. So we need to make sure these are really, really different. So let's maybe give this a little bit more contrast. I might even darken just the middle of this bottom clip in color. I'll just add another node. I'll hit Alt S. And remember a node in the color page is just a group of corrections. So I'm going to add a circle window here in the middle. And this is going to limit my color correction to just inside of this ellipse. And I'll bring the gain down quite a bit. So it just kind of darkens it under this graphic. And it's a little more contrast there. The other thing we can do to add a little more contrast is just to brighten up our upper layer, which is the one that's being limited by our mat and can boost the gain up just a touch, even boost the lift up a little bit. So even the black parts kind of stick out, can even boost up the saturation a touch. And now we can really see that difference between the clips. Once we like it, we can go back to the edit page. So this looks pretty good, but now we need to add some music to make it pop. You know what I mean? For pretty much all my music nowadays, I go to artlist.io. They make it super easy and simple to find the quality music that fits exactly what you need for your project. And what I really like is you can actually search by video theme. So if we're looking for like a vlog, I can just click on vlog and here's music that would be really great for a vlog. We can try some out. And let's say I want something that's vloggy, but also poppy. I can filter things like this. Let's say we don't want vocals. I can go up here to the right and click off the microphone. And then we only have instrumental music. See, this is exactly what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Vlog. basically exactly what you want for a vlog. So this is called challenge accepted. I'll just add this to my cart and click on my cart here. And then it'll show up in my library. Like I said, this video is sponsored by Artlist and I'm only ever going to be sponsored or work with companies that are actually good. You guys can see how much I do actually use this myself. What you do is you get a yearly subscription and you have unlimited downloads of songs. They're totally royalty free and you can use them for basically anything. It's like the easiest and most high quality music service I've ever used. It's the bomb. So now we have our music and we'll just bring this down a touch. Let's see how it sounds. And I'll just grab the end here and I'll make a quick edit. I'll cut this last part of the song to begin on a beat, and then I'll cut this first part to end on a beat. Right there. That works great. And now we have our little intro. Let's take a look. So 
what I'm talking about. So there's a quick guide on how to make the intro in Resolve. If you want more Resolve 17 videos, check out that playlist right there. It includes our crash course, which is just mighty fine. Mighty fine. Hmm, so fine. Baby shark dude, nope, I can't say that. 